If you want to cause change to happen to matter, you must use energy. Like if you want to move your position on the planet, if you want to shape some Play-Doh into some sort of vase, or if you want to um, burn some logs in a fire and create ash. So energy is defined as the ability to make change happen to matter. Potential energy means it's the energy is stored and change could happen. And energies of motion are things where we can see the change happening currently actively. So energy of motion number one, kinetic energy is the energy that moving objects have, like this airplane. Slow motion objects have less energy than fast moving objects. As you can see, the fast moving object has enough energy to have enough force to be able to knock something over. So the faster motion something has, the more kinetic energy it has. Also, the larger the mass that something has, the more energy that it contains because there's more particles moving and so there's more kinetic energy. Heat energy causes particles inside of a substance to move. The more heat energy that you have, the faster the particles move. And temperature is our measurement of that heat energy and that movement of particles. If you have two containers of water at the same temperature, all the particles are moving at the same speed. That's what the temperature means. But the container with more water has more moving particles. Therefore, it takes more heat energy to get more particles to move at the same speed. If you have two containers that have drastically different temperatures, obviously then the one that has the higher temperature is going to have um, particles that are moving faster and have more heat energy, as long as it's the same amount of water. Light energy is a result of these particles called photons that are both a wave and a particle that move through space at about 186,000 miles per second, incredibly quickly. If we compare a dim and a bright light, the bright light has a whole lot more energy because it has more photons that are moving. Sound energy is caused by the vibration of matter in a wave-like pattern. And so if we have a quiet sound and a loud sound, the loud sound has higher waves and those higher amplitude waves carry more motion and therefore more sound energy. If we were to compare a low tone and a high frequency tone, the high tone has waves that move at a faster pace, a higher frequency, so that faster movement means more sound energy. Electrical energy is the result of, again, the movement of electrons. If we were to compare a lightning bolt and a shock, the lightning bolt carries a whole lot more electricity, and so um, it has more electric energy. Gravitational potential energy is energy stored as a virtue of just the fact that an object could fall. Objects that can fall farther have more energy, which is usually transferred into greater motion than objects that are closer to the ground. Elastic potential energy is stored energy when an object is misshapen, when it's stretched or bent or squished. The more something is stretched, so a low stretch, gives you a little bit of stored elastic potential. And if you stretch something more or squish something more, then it will have more stored energy that could result in a greater transfer of energy. Chemical potential energy is stored just in the fact that molecules have bonds that can be broken. And when you break the bonds between atoms in molecules, then they release energy. And so a large concentration of chemical energy, like a bigger snack, would have more molecules to have bonds that can be broken. Therefore, more chemical potential energy is stored. With nuclear potential energy, the energy is stored in the nucleus of an atom. And so helium atoms have very small nucleus, whereas something like a zinc atom would have a larger nucleus. And so because there's more particles in a zinc atom, a larger atom has more energy stored in the nucleus, therefore more nuclear potential energy. Electrostatic potential energy is a buildup of electrons on some sort of surface. Um, which then could be transferred to another surface. So if I do a little storing of electrons, then I get a little electrostatic potential. And if I get a lot of storing of electrons, then I get a lot of electrostatic potential. As you can see here, 
Wow, look at that hair stand up. Check out the next video to learn how energy being used in motion and energy being stored just cycle over and over and over through a concept called the conservation of energy. And we can show these through energy transfer change that help us to understand how matter is changing and what forms of energy are causing it to happen.